Welcome once again to Accounting with Clive Ali. Please, if you do find this channel to be of assistance in any way in your life, make sure that you do subscribe to this channel and do not forget to like. Also, if there is any information that you feel you want to send across, you can actually be able to go to the comment section and leave a comment. Okay. Today we are looking at this question paper, which was written uh, November 2015. It's a national paper. I've picked out question number three, which I saw that it is a very good question that can assist those learners who are going to be writing their examinations this year. So this is the question paper. This is question number three, which deals with company financial statements and the audit report. Okay, and then, yeah, so we are going to do a 3.1.1. 3.1.1, 3.1.2, and also 3.1.3 in stages. So as for now, let's just focus only on 3.1.1. What are the requirements on 3.1.1? They are saying refer to information B. Which one is information B? This is B. We are referring to this information to calculate the correct net profit after tax for the year ended 30 June 2015. Indicate a plus for increase and a minus for decrease okay so we need to calculate the correct net profit it can happen that maybe the net profit that was calculated was done anyway the calculations were done by an inexperienced bookkeeper or accountant but now we want to sort out those problems using the information that is given on part b so here also on the board that we are using i've put a template that we are going to be using the answer book from the answer book 3.1.1 so i'll simply be showing the calculations here and making the entries in the answer book section okay let's start okay if you look at the answer book we are already given the incorrect net profit which is two million four hundred ninety three thousand and six hundred even if you go to b they are also saying that the net profit before tax of two million four hundred ninety three six hundred was determined before taking into account the following information so in other words all this other information that we are going to be looking at here was not taken into account when the calculation of net profit was done so we are going to analyze them one by one and find out whether as we adjust we are going to increase our profit or we are going to decrease our profit let's look at the first transaction that is given trading stock on 30 june 2015 valued at 100 and 91,900. Remember, our financial year is ending on the 30th of June 20, 2015. If it is ending there, it means it began on 1 July 2014. So this stock is the stock on hand because it is given at the end of the financial year. So the stock on hand that we are having is 191,900. We compare it with the trading stock or the stock that is given in this are lists and totals that are given here from the beginning are uh, the trading stock that is given here is given at uh 203,200 and the one on the end is 191,900 you can see that the one here that is given here it is most likely to be the opening stock was is greater than the one that is given on the end so if the situation is like that it means we are actually going to calculate what you call a trading stock deficit. We have got a trading stock deficit. So in other words, I'm saying that we are going to say the, the opening stock minus the closing stock. The answer that we get there is an expense, which we call a trading stock deficit. Let me show that on the answer book. The opening stock, I said, okay, fine. So I'm going to write a trading stock, trading stock deficit deficit okay my okay i'll do the calculation this side let me do the calculation here both the space here will not be enough okay the trading stock deficit so i'm going to say two hundred and three thousand two hundred minus the one hundred and ninety one thousand and nine hundred it's going to leave us with something like uh eleven thousand three hundred eleven thousand three hundred eleven thousand 300 okay this is an expense which was never recorded so 
as we record it, we are going to be reducing the profit that is already given there. So it's a minus. So we indicate minus 11,300. Minus 11,300. Okay, fine. Let's move on to 2B2. Provision for bad debts must be adjusted to 9,000. Okay, how much were they before? If we look here at the information that is given, provision for bad debts at the beginning, they were 11,400. These ones that are given at the end, they are 9,000. So we can see that the new provision for bad debts is smaller than the one that was already there. So what does that tell us? It tells us that there was a that that there was a decrease in it shows us that okay fine there was a decrease in the provision for bad debts okay there was a decrease in the provision for bad debts and a decrease in provision we consider it to be an income okay so I'll indicate here our provision provision for bad debts for bad debts bad debts adjustment okay and then of course if the space allows you when as you write you just open a bracket there okay so this one the calculation for the first one this is the calculation for the provision for bad debts we are going to say eleven thousand and four hundred minus a nine thousand we are going to get something like uh two thousand and four hundred we are going to get two thousand and four hundred two thousand and four hundred 2,400 is a decrease in provision. A decrease in provision for bad debts is actually considered to be income. So if it is income, it simply means that this amount is going to increase the profit. Plus 2,400. A decrease in provision for bad debts is income. If it was going to be an increase, then it was going to be an expense and we were going to decrease our net profit there. Okay, fine. Let's move on to part uh, part three. Rent for July 2015, 2,800 has been received in advance. What do we do with an amount in advance? Rent, this rent has been, has, has been received in advance. So it's actually rent income. So we are going to write rent income, rent income. The amount that is in advance, what do we do with it? We minus. So we are going to indicate minus. 2800 whatever that is in advance or prepaid we, we subtract those amounts okay fine and then let's move on to the other item on four we have got an annual insurance premium of six thousand was paid for the period of one april 2015 to 31 march 2016 okay when you see an adjustment like this consider the time frame that is indicated here do not just take the six thousand the way it is or maybe sometimes you just consider it to be a prepaid amount, all of it. We have to check exactly when was it taken, what amount or which months are actually within our financial year. And then we consider to be the other ones that are beyond to be the prepaid expense. So this is how you can do this calculation safely. Okay, you can make your timeline. You can make a small timeline to indicate your financial year. Our financial year begins on 1 July. Uh, 2014 and then it ends on 30 june 2015 this is our financial year and when was this insurance taken it's an annual insurance on the 1st of april it, it is up to 31 march this is 12 months okay so from 1 april 2015 april is somewhere here 1 april 2015 that's when the insurance was taken, okay? So what we are only going to consider is what is within our financial year. So from April up to 30 June, how many months are there? If you check closely, you find out that we've got April, we've got May, and then we've got June. So there are only three months that we are going to take into consideration. The other remaining months from the 12 months, three from 12, we remain with nine, nine months. The nine months are the prepaid expense that we are looking for the nine months are the prepaid expense so we'll find out okay fine if six thousand was contributed towards the insurance we multiply now by nine over twelve we'll get something like four thousand five hundred four so four thousand five hundred is the prepaid expense okay so if they did not consider the prepaid expense 
So it would mean that our expense for insurance was overstated. Okay? And then now what, do, what are we supposed to do so that we can reduce it? It means we are going to put a plus on the 4,500. Because if the expense was bigger, it means it decreased our profit. Now to correct it, we are adding back that uh, insurance. So we indicate insurance. Insure, insurance. Okay, I'll even show the calculation here. It's 6,000 multiplied by 9 months over 12. Okay, and it's a plus 4,500. Okay, we are done with that one. Okay, and then now let's move on to number five. The auditor discovered that the profit on disposal of a vehicle 6,800 was incorrectly shown as a loss. Okay, this one is a little bit tricky, but I would want to explain to you what happened so that you understand my answer. Okay, this is our asset disposal account. I'll use a T account, asset disposal. Okay. The loss on sale appears on the credit side. The profit on sale appears on the debit side. So here they are saying the auditor discovered that the net profit on disposal of a vehicle, 6,800, was incorrectly shown as a loss. So there was a profit, but they showed it as a loss of 6,800. Okay. So you might say, okay, in order for me to correct this, I simply have to take 6,800 and record it as a profit on the debit side. By doing this, you remain with a balance of zero. 6,800 here, 6,800 here, will live with zero. So how then do we correct this? We have to record it twice. So you have got to put again another 6,800. Another 6,800. So it's 6,800, 6,800. Then after this cancels this, we will now remain with a profit of 6,800. So in other words, I'm saying that you need to record the asset disposal profit twice or you have to record a double amount, okay? So here I'm going to indicate, okay, a correction of error, correction of error, okay? It was on asset disposal, okay? I can even show the adjustment. It's 6,800 plus 6,800, okay? And then it will give us something like 13,600. 13,600, of course, okay, this is going to increase our profit. Okay, do we still have anything? Okay, they have also given us, okay, the amount for the amount for the uh, income tax is 750,000 for the year. So we record the income tax where it's supposed to come here, 750,000. So if we add everything now here, okay, from the net profit, what is a, having a minus with minus, what is having a plus with plus, okay. So the answer, the correct net profit before tax is going to be something like 2,500,000. This is the correct net profit before tax. When we minus the tax, we will remain with something like 1,750,000. So this is our corrected net profit after taking all the adjustments that are given on B into consideration. 1,750,000 is our correct net profit.